Hello everyone. Many of you asked me to publish my code for train. And finally I did that. There is a link down in the video description which you can download this demo for train. But please note if this thing crash or not perform good as expected, that is because it is not still ready. And I don't recommend to use this in a real project yet, but I recommend to test this and see if this thing work on your system. Also, if you can help me or contribute to this, I will be very happy about that. So this is a 8 km by 8 km train, which is a little bit big. To make sure this work properly, I test that in my older laptop, which is uh, Intel Cry7 and Nvidia 960. And this worked properly without no problem there. But this still has some known bug which I will refer to them later in this video. Now I want to explain how to get this thing running and all of the setting that is available to you now. But please note, if you are more curious about the algorithm of the train generation, watch my other video about that. This will help you to understand more what I'm going to explain here. Go to the GitHub and download this repository. After doing that, just unzip that and you will have this Godot project. If you go into add-on folder, mtrain, in src folder, there is all code for train. So here I explain some of them. Grid class is responsible for creating grid and points. Mbound is responsible for defining a region in a grid. This is also has other functionality like grow with the limit of another bound, which is really important when we want to determine LOD level. M chunk generator, this has only one static method which is responsible to create chunks mesh. If you watch my other videos, at first I created chunks in Blender, but now here chunks are generated automatically super fast with this C++ code. This will help to reduce the size of the exported game. There is another class which is called mchunks which is responsible to create and manage chunks. So mchunks generator don't create chunks by itself. mchunks class is responsible for that. And finally we have mtrain. This class is responsible to create grid. Also it manage grid operation in a different CPU thread. Also this class create all of the user interface access to this plugin. Well, all done. But if you need some more information about something specific, just ask me in the comment section. Here in GD extension folder, you can run scans and build the library for your target platform. But I already built some library for Linux and Windows, which is in this folder. So now let's open this project and see what it's going to do. Okay, well. If you open this and it's crashed, just do it another time, that will be okay. Here just open word scene. Inside this, as you can see, there is a mtrain node, camera node, and a word environment node. Right now train does not work in editor properly, but I fixed that later. But if you run this, you will see the train. First, let's take a look at some of the settings available for this train. Here we have mean size, which is 32. Mean size is the smallest chunk size available for your train, and it will determine the base grid size. Next, we have max size, and this is the maximum size available for the train chunk to be merged to. You can easily change this setting without any problem. Next, we have H scale or horizontal scale. This also depends on the height map that you use. For example, the height map which I use has one pixel for each meter. So here I set my minimum horizontal scale to one, which means the LOD level with the higher density of the vertices has one vertex for each meter. Then we have max horizontal scale. This is because we want to create a train with different level of detail. So this is saying what is the maximum size of the horizontal scale for further distance which in this case is 32. Please note the maximum horizontal scale cannot be bigger than the base grid size or mean size. And if you try to do that, it will give you an error. Well, let's go further and see what other setting we have. LOD distance. This will determine up to which distance each LOD is active. For example, LOD zero, which is the LOD with the highest density of the vertices, 
is active up to the distance 5. Also, please note all of these distances are in a grid unit. This means that the LOD is active up to 5 grid distance unit, which is an integer. Very well, down here we have a lot of other stuff. All of these determine which chunk with which LOD should we create. For example, we don't want to create a chunk with size of 1024 meter with LOD level 0. Because train chunk with this size is just going to be merge LOD in further distance to the player. So we don't want to occupy RAM memory for what we don't use. Also, if you change the train setting up here, as you can see, train property will change down here. There are two more other things up here. One of them is the train size, which is the train size in grid unit. In this case, grid unit is 32. So this is 256, which in the grid unit will be 8192 meter. Other thing is max range. Right now, it means all of the train will be generated. Also, there is offset. So the train starts from 0 in the X and 0 in Z and grow in positive direction. If you want to put the train in the middle, you just need to offset that here. And I think I explained most of the things. If I miss something, tell me in the comment section. So if you run this, you can see it's printing down here some stuff. Train will update four times each second. As you can see here, it is written the total number of the chunk generated in this train update and how much of them are removed and how much is added. In future, I want to optimize the merging algorithm to reduce this number. Also, one important thing that I want to add in future is that I want to divide my grid in different region and each region will generate collision shape in another different CPU thread also, each region will have a different material. So we can divide the height map to smaller pieces and load them whenever we want. Let me show you why we need to do that. If you go to the HF folder, you can see there is a height map .exr here. And look at its size, 768 megabyte. This is a lot. Basically, we can reduce this to half because this is a float 32-bit image and float 16-bit is enough for most of the cases. I imported this file from a raw 16-bit unsigned integer. Unfortunately, Godot does not have a raw importer. So I wrote that one by myself and I could not create a 16-bit image with that. It did not work. Maybe in future, I will work on this and I will make that working too. And now if you run the game and go into debugger, if you look at the video memory, it is around 1.8 gigabyte, which is a lot. And we need to optimize this uh, because beside train, we need to add a lot of other stuff in our game. And each of this stuff will occupy uh, GPU memory a little bit. That was about train. And, uh, and test this train and let me know what result you get. Uh, so I hope you like this video and till the next video, have a good time.